guys and welcome back to the channel so today's reading is going to be a pick a card reading and it is going to be what do you need to hear right now so we've got three pals to choose from we have black red and emerald so i'm just going to give you a minute to tune in and pick which one most resonates with you And if you need more time, you can always pause the video. So I'm going to start today with black. So if you chose black, what do you need to hear today? Okay, so, okay, <laughs> right. I feel like at the minute, your best bet is to, first of all, let pay attention to how you're talking to yourself and how you're talking to other people. This isn't a criticism at all. I think that what's likely happening, and bear in mind that this could actually be the relationship with yourself. So for some of you, you might be in a vulnerable place and you're not being kind to yourself or gentle with yourself and you're being encouraged to do so and to give yourself the benefit of the doubt. For others of you, you're in quite a confident place in your life right now, quite settled, quite sure of what you want, where you're going, who you are, and you're dealing with a person or other people in your life who might be in a more vulnerable place in their life. And as a result, what may have happened is that your approach towards those people or that person is either causing clashes between the two of you or it's making it feel like you can't reach them, you can't meet them on their level, you can't get through to them in some way. And I'm going to explain today why that is. But first of all, I just want to say you chose black. Now, I'm really happy that you did because when this card comes out as a choice, as an option, I'm always concerned that people won't pick it because it's quite spooky. Um, so I'm really glad that you did pick that today and it didn't put you off. But we have the King of Cups and the Chariot here. So that's strong cancer energy. So this could be something that started in cancer season or was quite prominent in July. Um, something may have come to the surface here throughout that month, but not necessarily. Obviously, this could be a sign that's in your chart as well. Now, I feel like the King of Cups is someone who's emotionally in tune, someone who's emotionally available, someone who has emotion, but I, I often think that isn't someone who is led by their emotions. Not They don't let their emotions take control. They don't let their emotions run away with them. And I feel like this, for most of you, is you. I feel like you are the person that is in quite a comfortable place in their life or just self-assured place you know you're you're not over emotional right now you're in quite a calm content place you might not have everything the way that you would like it to be but I don't feel like that is phasing your energy right now I think you're just cracking on you're getting on with things you're charging full steam ahead you're making things happen that need to happen but again I feel like and I'm looking at the image here I feel like you're dealing with someone that's in a more vulnerable place, someone who perhaps isn't as confident right now or is in need of some kind of emotional support. And I feel like what's been going on is that you might have been trying to be a bit of a fixer for this person. You might have been trying to sort of rush in and fix this person's problems or, you know, direct them in some way or lead them down a certain path, you've been trying to, you know, that's your version of support, you've been trying to help them, you've been trying to guide them. Now I feel what the problem is here is that that's not what this person needs. It's not that this person needs you to answer all their questions or find all their solutions to their problems. This person or these people around you 
need you to meet them on their level. Now, that doesn't mean permanently. I just think, you know, temporarily. And this might be something that might be quite difficult for you because I think for some of you, you're dealing with people or a person that may be different from you or have a different way of approaching life, different way of handling their emotions, different way of, you know, they're led by different aspects of themselves in their life. And so I think that this meeting each other on each other's level is quite difficult or challenging for both of you. But at the minute, I feel like this person is in need of a lot of support right now or just encouragement in some way. And you may have been trying to give them that. I feel like you've been trying to fill them with hope. You've been trying to get them to plant some seeds. You've been trying to get them to um, make certain moves in their life to help themselves, which, you know, you should be really proud of yourself for doing. That is a show of support. It's not that you haven't been supportive. I just don't think it is what this person is needing right now. And what this person is actually needing is for you to meet them in a vulnerable place. Now, what do I mean by that? I feel like it's natural when you see someone that you care about struggling to want to rush in and provide the answers for them. It's very natural to want to do that. But often when people are in a difficult or challenging situation position in their lives, what they're really needing is just someone to listen, someone to, you know, someone who isn't going to say anything or someone who isn't really going to try and fix the problem, but rather just listen to what they're going through and, and, and how they're feeling and, you know, just come in and say, look, I can give you advice and I can help you if you want, but if you just need me to be here while you talk to me about what you're going through, then I can do that as well. You know, sometimes that is the best approach you can take with someone because you're then leaving it up to them to tell you what they need from you. So a gentle approach is what you need to take right now. And again, if this applies to your relationship with yourself, then that is also, that still stands. So if you find that you've not really been talking to yourself in a very kind way, then that's something that you need to start changing because of it's hurting your relationship with yourself. If this is about someone else in your life that you've noticed is in a bit of a vulnerable position or place, it's not about needing to fix what's going on with them. It's more so just about being there and telling them that you're there and telling them that you're there to listen and, and being more vulnerable with them you know, sometimes we, we want to go in with tough love and sometimes that's what's needed. Other times though, that can have the opposite effect to what's intended and can make things worse. Other times people need a more vulnerable approach, a softer approach, just a reminder that you're someone who cares about them, that you're someone that's there for them, that you're someone who's going to listen, that, you know, that this person has someone who loves them and cares about them and they don't have to deal with everything alone, you know, so just giving that person that reminder rather than coming in with tough love, rather than coming in with, right, what are we going to do? Let's take action. Go, go, go. Sometimes that can be even more overwhelming to someone that isn't in a place where they can, they feel like they can take action, where they feel like they can, you know, do what it is that you're suggesting they do. You know, it's it's almost like a reminder that we are all different and we all function differently. And, you know, not every approach is going to work for every person, you know, and we need to adjust and adapt to help each other, you know. And at some point or another, this is going to come back around where it'll be your turn, where you might need the support, you might need the help. And this person or these people are going to have to adjust and adapt their natural technique and then, you know, natural approach to help you. And that's what they'll do. But right now, it feels very much like you are in quite a stable place. You, and even this, it's almost like a teacher. You know, that's what I keep getting here. It's like a teacher. Like, well, if you do this, then this will be the result. You know, I feel like you have that kind of approach, like, like, 
why don't you try this? Or have you thought about doing this? And again, it's very helpful. There's nothing wrong with that. And in some circumstances, in some situations, that will work. But I feel like for this person, that's not working. It's almost causing more delays, causing uh, this person to slow down more. Because I feel like what they're really needing is emotional support. They need someone who's just going to listen while they open up and express how they're feeling and and receive just, you know, support and empathy in return. So I feel like a change of approach in how, how you are either speaking to someone or communicating with others or how you're speaking to yourself. So apply that as it resonates, but I really feel like that's what's going on here. Yeah, so your advice is dear spirit, and it actually does say bring a gentle touch. So I'm going to read it out from the book for you because I want you to um, really take in what it says because I feel like it's going to expand upon what I've already just told you. The time has come to be gentle and diplomatic when dealing with others. You might have found yourself in a situation where negotiations are necessary in order to reach your goal. Be mindful of the words you choose, but do not worry. Dear Spirit reminds you that you have the ability to be sure-footed and confident. There we go. I, I knew I was getting a confident uh, vibe. I feel like a lot of you are in that place in your lives right now. While showing humility and respect for others. You will find that your capacity for calm and grounded communication is heightened at this time. Follow the way of dear spirit and you will do well, gaining the respect of others and finding common ground that is pleasing to you. Remember that understanding others and their needs will be more powerful at this time than putting your own first. If you do that, you will be rewarded tenfold. So yeah, I really feel like, like this is about meeting people on their level. And it's a really hard thing to do because we all have our unique ways of coping with things and dealing with things. And it's really hard to kind of put yourself in a completely different, you know, energy and, and, and using different approaches and getting used to doing that when it's needed and necessary. And we also have to remember that we can't be everything for everyone. You know, that's impossible. But if this, I feel like this is someone that's close to you, someone that you deal with quite regularly and someone that you would like to help. And so I feel like this is just a, a, a bit of a, hit, a hint or a heads up, you know, um, try a different approach in order to kind of get through to that person. This person requires something different from what you've been giving out, which I think has been more, you, you've been directing them, showing them the way when they actually need something much simpler than that from you, which is just an ear to listen. Um, you know, and, and the comfort of knowing that you support them and that you're there. Okay, so I'm going to leave that one and I am going to move on to Red Pile. Bye. Hi, Red Pile, and welcome to your reading. So what do you need to hear right now? Okay, this is all about something that you are trying to cultivate in your life or you want to cultivate in your life. This is a goal. This is an ambition. This is a dream that you have, something that you see having for yourself, something that you want to make happen in reality. This is all about something along them lines. And it's a transformation, a change that wants to take place. You know, it's something that in fact, some of you may have actually been seeing butterflies. Um, obviously, well, depending on where you are in the world, it is the time of year where you're typically go going to see them anyway. But you may have felt like there's been a lot of them, or a lot around you, or you've just been stumbling across them recently. That might be a sign for you or an extra confirmation that this message is for you to go for, for the goal, to make it happen. Now, I feel like this has also come out though because some of you need to make some adjustments or changes to your schedule in order to make this happen. I think that's been part of the problem. I think you're quite busy people. You have a lot of responsibilities, a lot on your plate. It may feel You may feel burdened or weighed down by, by what you've already got going on in your life. And it feels like something's got to give, you know, something has got to go, in other words. 
a change of routine, a change of how you, you know, go about your day-to-day -day life, you need to make room. It's almost like, you know, needing to have a spring clean or to just clear stuff out to make room for what you're trying to cultivate and what you're trying to create and, and, and make happen in your life. You need room in order to do that. And right now, I feel like you're already stretched quite thin and there's not a lot of time or energy or space in order for you to be able to make this happen for yourself. So change is required. And I think you would really benefit right now from having a look at your schedule, having a look at your routine, having a look at, at the things that you already have going on in your life and really just seeing what could be put on the back burner, seeing if there's anything that could, you know, you could put to the side for a while that you don't really need to be doing right now in order to create the space for this change, for this, you know, manifestation that you're trying to create. You've got the emperor here as your first card as well. And the emperor is a bit of a boss man, you know, he, well, he's the boss man. He's in charge, he's in control. Now, what's interesting to me is that he's holding a compass so for some of you, that is about direction, you know, it's, it's, if I go for this, will I be making the right decision? So there could be some, um, some indecision there, some uncertainty. If I, if I choose to do this, will it be the right move for me to make? For others of you though, I kind of see it as a, as a, like, a, um, a pocket watch, you know, and it's, it's referencing time. And so I feel like some of you are kind of saying, I just don't, I'd love to do that, but I just don't have the time. And this is a message then for you saying, but you could make the time. If you really wanted to do this, if you really wanted to cultivate this new experience in your life, it, re it just requires you shuffling some things around. But obviously changing routine is difficult. It's a routine for a reason, right? And we're usually comfortable with our routine. And so shaking that routine up can feel a bit, you know, a bit scary sometimes or a bit, a bit of an annoyance to have to do. Um, and it requires a bit of effort, you know, and, and if we're already stretched thin and we're already tired and we're already overwhelmed, we're not going to have a lot of energy and a lot of motivation to make those changes, but you are being encouraged to do that. <laughs> you are being encouraged to make those changes because there's a reality that you're trying to create or a reality that you need to create, you know? And again, this, this idea of writing things down, it's almost like, let's look at the schedule, right? What can I cross off the list? What can I pu push back to next week? What can I, you know, what can I leave for a while in the background, on the back burner, that I can come back to later, that just frees up this period of time for me to be able to actually start creating what I want to create. It's coming up with a plan of how you're going to make something happen and really just really committing yourself to it. It says, live your best life by design. You have amazing experiences, freedom, lifestyle, infinite potential yeah so that's really encouraging for you that you have some really good ideas and and really amazing skills and talents that you could put to use but I think because of life because of schedule because of the obligations and responsibilities that we all have it's become very difficult for you to really find the time to really dedicate to this new experience for yourself. It may be a plan that you've had in, in place for a while. You've just not had the, the time to be able to sit down and really put it into practice. So you're being asked to take control. You're being asked to take the lead now and make this happen for yourself. Because I feel like there's been delays or you've been delaying yourself, maybe a bit of procrastination, but I don't, I think if it's procrastination, I think you've had good reason. I don't think it's just laziness. I think it's, I've already got so much going on and any free time I actually have right now, I just want to rest, you know, and I just want to catch up on sleep or just have some downtime where I can just have some fun or really just relax after, you know, some hard days. 
So I think, you know, although it could be procrastination, I don't actually think it's because you can't be bothered, although you could word it that way as well. It's more so because you've lacked energy and you've probably been borderline burnt out. So I can understand that. But there is there is something that you are wanting to cultivate in your life and you have there's a strong um encouragement to do so because it what the ideas that you have are good ones and you are more than capable of making that happen but it is going to require things to change the way that you've been living your life the the schedule that you've been on the routine that you've had it is going to mean that that will change um because it'll have to because you're making room for something new but I think you can always start with small steps, you know, I think sometimes when we're trying to take on something new, especially if it's something quite big, th that in itself can feel overwhelming. So we never actually start, you know, and for some of you, that might be what this is referring to. It's almost like, oh, the, the, the thought of actually putting this into practice is so overwhelming to me because of the amount that would need to be done in order to make it successful, in order to get some anywhere with it so I'm going to stop before I've even started you know and sometimes that feeling of being overwhelmed can have that impact and so it's it, it it's that beginning phase that if you can jump this first hurdle you'll be absolutely fine you know you'll get into a good rhythm with it but the first hurdle is the hardest in this situation in the context of this reading because it it's it's overcoming that feeling of being overwhelmed of everything that would need to be done, you know, and that's sometimes the hardest thing to get your mind to wrap, <laughs> to wrap its head around, <laughs> to get yourself to wrap your head around that is quite difficult because, you know, it's the thought of it that can sometimes be worse than actually doing it. So it's not allowing your mind to stop you before you start especially when your ideas seem very good and very exciting and could be quite successful um but yeah pay attention to butterflies and potentially for some of you you might not like this i certainly wouldn't spiders <laughs> um both of these things could be around you quite significantly right now and I, I feel like there's a secondary meaning for that. Now, that secondary meaning is to do with your creativity and this encouragement to make changes to your schedule, to create a different reality for, for yourself that is more fitting with who you are today and also what you need today. Because what you need today is different from what you used to need. And I think you've been trying to tell yourself that or there's some part of you that's trying to you know, come forward. And even if it's not a project, even if it's not a goal or anything creative, it's something that you haven't had a lot of in your life. So this could, for some of you, this is, um, you know, needing to spend more time socialising. You know, if you've lived quite an isolated life because of work and responsibilities, you may be getting hints and signs that you need to be more social. Um for others of you, this can be, you know, anything from like exercise or a hobby that you've been wanting to take on. But you're really being encouraged to give your all to it because it would be really beneficial to you and your overall well-being. And I think it'd be more in alignment with who you have become. And, you know, when we grow, when we make changes, when we become a different version of ourselves... We need different things from life in order to be fulfilled. Okay, so I'm going to read Spider Spirit to you. So it says, Weaving your dreams into the fabric of life begins with a single thread of intention and then spirit joins you as your co-weaving partner. Take but a single step to make your dream a reality and spirit will take ten towards you. For the universe is designed to support your dream weaving. Sp uh, spider spirit arrives when you need reminding of the awesome power of co-creation. 
Ideas and resources will begin to appear as if by magic as you begin to bring your dreams from the realm of intention into the, well, the realm of senses where they take form. The action you need to take is to be clear about your intentions and then act as if you have become the one that lives the life you desire. The web of creation has an uncanny way of coming together to weave the beautiful pattern you set in motion. Another message of Spider Spirit is about any creative project you may be considering, writing, painting, music, journaling, gardening, etc. Now is the time when inspiration wants to be channeled through you as something creative, even artistic and tangible. Creative projects are successful now if you are so inclined. Let yourself be open to abundance. So yeah, a lot of encouragement. <laughs> so I feel like you need to sit down with that schedule, look things over, see where you can make some room and start dedicating some time to things that you have perhaps always wanted to try, always wanted to give a go, ideas that you've always put on the back burner that need now to come to the forefront. Um, and make those changes that can give you a more fulfilling lifestyle. Because I feel like if you... I almost feel like this is going to happen regardless, but it, it can happen your way or it can happen the universe's way. It's up to you. <laughs> I know which way I'd choose. Okay, so I'm going to leave that one there. But that was really good to talk to you all again, and I am going to move on to Emerald. Bye. Hi guys, and welcome to Emerald Pile. So if you chose Emerald, this is your reading today. Okay, so what do you need to hear Right, okay. I feel <clears throat> I feel like this is about who you've been surrounding yourself with and also what you've been putting up with but what you've been putting yourself through as well. So this is about how you've been treating yourself as well as who you've been surrounding yourself with and how they've been treating you. So this could be both of those situations or one or the other. Either way, this is about your worth. So something about your lifestyle, something about the way that you've been living your life, who you've been with, how you've been talking to yourself, treating yourself, how other people have been treating you, has been making you question your self-worth, which is not it's not a comfortable experience to go through. It's not something that you should be having to put up with, whether it's from yourself or from other people. But I can see that there is this feeling of not being good enough or you're not bigging yourself up a lot at the minute. I feel like you're putting yourself down, if anything. Um, not seeing yourself as you really are. And I think that that's down to what's been going on around you and activities as well that you may have been taking part in, which I'll get to. We have the Six of Pentacles here. Now, it's an interesting version of the Six of Pentacles, you know, because it's, it's literally a guy sat on top of a cigarette. <laughs> so work that one out. Um, so my first instinct with, with this was habits that you have. You know, our habits can actually tell us a lot about how we feel about ourselves. I know that just from personal experience, when I'm in a more, when I am in a position or place in my life where I'm quite confident or I'm feeling good about myself, I tend to make healthier choices, whether that be food, alcohol, other bad habits, I exercise more, etc. I feel like when I'm in a good place, I I choose to do things that are going to keep me feeling good because I feel like I deserve to feel good at those particular points, right? When I'm not in such a good place or when I'm not feeling as confident or when I'm not really bigging myself up, I turn to things that only make me feel worse, you know? And it's almost, it's almost like... Um, you're punishing yourself. Now, I don't see it like this at the time. I only see it after the fact. But I do think that it's a common thing that we all go through, that when you're overdoing something, you know, an occasional treat, whatever that might be for you, is okay.
but I think if you're overdoing something it's almost like you're punishing yourself you know you're you don't feel like you deserve to feel good so you make yourself feel worse and that can come in the form of how you speak to yourself as well you know are you waking up every day criticizing the way that you look criticizing you know what you're saying in conversations with other people how are you treating yourself I feel like something's been a bit out of whack with that recently. You may have had a bad habit that's gotten a bit out of control. I also feel as well that you've almost, you may feel like you have to avoid certain people right now or you're trying to avoid certain people right now because every time you're around them, you get burnt. Meaning, you know, there's certain people in your life who you may feel are throwing a lot of digs at you at the minute or they are putting you down, making you feel bad about yourself in some kind of way, um, not really saying very nice things to you. Um, and that in itself is, is putting you down, as it would, especially if it's coming from people who you care about, you know, who you're going to take their opinion more seriously and more to heart. But I think in those situations, if you are dealing with people who aren't really saying anything nice to you or just keep criticizing you just know that often that is just a reflection it's a reflection of how they're feeling in their life some people do it because it makes them feel superior you know it's like if I put you down about an insecurity that you have I feel superior um and other people do it because they have that insecurity themselves and so they point that out in you and and try and make it your problem it's almost like they're trying to deflect so it's usually one or the other, but just pay attention to that and try not to take it personally. Try not to see it as fact um, because it isn't, you know, and it, it is really just a reflection of what other people have got going on in their lives and, and the energy that they're in. But also what's interesting about that is um, when other people seem to like to put us down or you know you could be in quite a confident place in your life and suddenly you feel like you're being targeted by people other times you're in a low place and then you're receiving that same kind of energy from other people you know it almost like they add to it in those situations you have to see it as a reflection Sometimes people treat us the way we are feeling about ourselves. So if we're not confident, if we're putting ourselves down and then we notice that other people are doing the same, it's because of where our head's at, you know? We're, we're being horrible to ourselves and, and now we're receiving that from other people too as a reflection to show us that that's, that's how, how we feel about who we are. And that's why that relationship, the one that you have with you, is the most important one you'll ever have because it literally determines every experience that you have in your life with your relationships, with what you set out to achieve, you know, everything. It really does set the tone. And so it's always the core. And so if you find that, you know, you feel like your relationships are suffering right now, are you, you're not really connecting with other people. I feel like I've said something like this recently in one of my previous readings. Is it something to do with your relationship with you? Is it encouragement for you to become your biggest cheerleader? Is it time that you stand up for yourself? Is it time that you start to be your biggest advocate? Because I feel like you're very burdened by either what other people are saying to you right now, judgment perhaps, criticism, or you're feeling burdened and so you're turning to bad habits. And this is a reflection of how, you know, your self-worth right now and, and the place that it's in, the phase that it's going through. Yeah, because you've got heart-mind union. This has been coming up a lot in the last few readings, but the last thing it says is highest vibration. So I feel like this is encouragement to get to that point where, where you're in a higher vibration. I feel like I feel like it's difficult for you to maintain a high vibration right now, and I feel like that has something to do with the company that you keep and 
um, the habits that you have. We don't always realise how much our habits affect us, but we all know that feeling of when we're taking care of ourselves, we're we're eating healthy, we're drinking plenty of water, all the, these stereotypical things that we hear all the time, we all know how much better we feel when we're doing that, as opposed to when we turn to bad habits to cope. And you've got lonely here as well, so I, I feel like it's, it has become very difficult for you to connect with the people around you, or for you to, you may feel like, again, I said this in the previous reading, something about your social life may not be where you would like it to be. And I, I feel as well that, that this, again, is directly linked to your worth. Almost like you're not allowing your, you're not allowing other people to see the real you. You're not allowing other people to know your thoughts, your perspectives on things. You're not allowing people to really see the vulnerable side. And as a result, your the connections that you have with other people could be quite surface level. There's not a lot of depth to them. Um, and I feel like it's a restriction that you're placing on yourself because you don't know your worth or you aren't seeing your worth clearly it's almost like a cycle you know it's like when people say what came first the chicken or the egg it's really hard to tell with cycles like this because was it that one person made a criticism about you and it you took it to heart and then you know you started to really feel that emotionally your energy dropped your vibration dropped you turn to bad habits, you know, and then the cycle just repeats itself. Or did you start with bad habits, you know, and then that made you feel a bit lethargic and a bit, you know, a bit down physically, which then made you feel down emotionally, which then, you know, affected your relationships, your social life. You know, it's really hard to tell in cycles like this, which habit, which decision, which event took place first in order to set the cycle going but the important part is that you get yourself out of it and the easiest way to do that is actually not through your relationships because that requires you to depend and rely on another person's actions it's more about your relationship with yourself how you how you speak to yourself are you encouraging yourself supporting yourself praising yourself where it's you know where it's well deserved um, are you being nice to yourself? Are you saying nice things to yourself? You know, start there. If you can start there, you'll notice a difference. You'll notice that trickle out into other areas of your life. Um, I think you would notice your habits change. I think you would notice the dynamics in your relationships change, you know, and, and it really is something so simple but it's something that we often forget to do because we don't necessarily see it as impacting us in such a big way. So I'm going to read out your advice, which is skunk spirit, and it says know your worth. So it says, what do you value? What do you believe in? Is your best, most authentic self on display? Skunk spirit comes as a reminder that you can be proud of who you are and what you have accomplished. Know your worth. Not everyone will agree with you or share your values, but you can walk with your head high, knowing that when you express your integrity, others can feel your authenticity and will be inspired by it. Be who you are, and if your reputation precedes you, good. You have much to be proud of, and skunk spirit wants you to be your best self. The true you... <laughs> I promise I didn't set that one up, <laughs> but what a way to end. So yeah, I feel like, <laughs> I feel like it's very self-explanatory, you know, and you will know if this is for you because you'll know how you've been feeling within yourself, how you've been feeling around the people that you've come across, whether or not you've really been saying what you want to say, or if you've been sort of tweaking what you want to say to try and fit in with other people you know, you'll know if you're clear on what your belief system is. And 
if you're not, and if you're not, then this reading is possibly for you, you know, and it really just starts with your relationship with yourself, because whether it's about your beliefs, whether it's about your habits, whether it's about your relationships, it doesn't really matter, because if your relationship with you is a bit damaged, a bit tarnished, a bit, you know, unhealthy, then that needs sorting before anything else can be, you know, and that really just comes in, in, in small changes, just by catching yourself when you're trying to criticize yourself, you know, it's very easily done. Stopping yourself from doing that unnecessarily and start praising yourself more for the things that you get right and being more forgiving of yourself when you do things wrong. Um, but it is, it's quite a hard change to make, but I think you'll really benefit from it if you give it a go. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there, but that was really nice talking to you all again, and I will speak to you all again soon. Bye.